Hello everyone, my name is David Patch and for this week's presentation I did goal setting in sports and athletic populations. I hope you all enjoy. Welcome everyone. Uh, before we get started I just want to set the stage for what we can all expect uh, throughout the duration of this presentation. Um, we're going to be discussing, um, of course, goal setting. Uh, we're going to define that. We're going to talk about the principles of effective goal setting. Um, we'll discuss different strategies and, and, and principles and tips that will uh, also contribute to um, the optimization of goal setting for our athletes. Um, we'll discuss common problems um, with goal setting that you know a lot of athletes encounter um, in their athletic careers. And we can um, also uh, you know, combat those with questions, uh, the proper questions to ask and address um, to help our athletes sort through those issues um, and, and, to, and to go and, and go beyond them. Um, another thing that we'll look at is the individual approach to goal setting versus the team approach um, to, to goal setting. Of course, we're all familiar with the acronym that TEAM stands for, which is Together Everyone Achieves More. Um, so I think that um, by comparing and contrasting both of those different approaches to goal setting, it'll help strengthen our understanding um, and our ability to help our athletes uh, achieve um, all of their um, dreams and aspirations regarding their goals in sports. Um, now, you also might kind of ask, you know, well, what's up with the earth? Um, in the hands of this individual that I have here for my welcome slide. And that serves uh, just as a reminder um, of one of the bigger goals, um, the bigger picture of all of this, um, reminding us that uh, of the three pounds of gelatinous tissue that uh, resides between our ears, the human brain, the most fabulous, sophisticated organ system in the universe, and that's what we're working here uh, with. Um, and I think that if we can take advantage of that, we can really gain leverage in our approach to these goals and helping um, our youth and our athletes uh, obtain and achieve all of their aspirations because they're fully capable because they have the world between the ears. Goal setting can be defined as a theory of motivation that effectively energizes athletes to become more productive and effective. And when I think about this, a lot of us have seen this in practice, a lot of us have put this in practice, and a lot of us have yet to um, teach this. Though. And I think that's what I really want to spend a little time here to reflect on is this basic definition and how it applies to your own life. Think about um, the times in which you've used goal setting as an ally to help organize your thoughts and to facilitate and harness all your energy and to put it, escalate it into action to make them come true. And I think that this is important because nothing really teaches better than example and personal experience. Therefore, the better relationship we have with our own, um, you know, ways in which we've put this into practice, I think the better we can articulate with helping athletes do the same in regards to achieving their goals in their sports. So why have goal setting? Well, goal setting can be a, uh, an essential part of any athlete's training plan. Uh, whether the goal is to improve their physical skills, their mental skills, or cognitive skills, um, or just you know to do it for pure enjoyment uh, for the sport to stay ha uh, to stay active and to to live a healthy lifestyle. Uh, setting goals can also help athletes focus on what's really important to them. Uh, it can increase their effort and motivation to stick to their plan or accountability and level of commitment. And it can also help them consider new strategies and can help them um, practice the art of openness and acceptance. Um, in the press of goal setting, you know, because the road to success is always under construction. So the sooner athletes learn to appreciate those concepts, I think that the smoother the journey will be. And another important thing about goal setting is it really provides quantifiable feedback. 
you know, and I think that's really important in terms of when you're, you know, you're reaching for a big goal, you know, you focus on the small things. And if you have numbers and you have a tracking record of progress, you can look back and reflect upon it. It can really help um, in terms of critiquing your approach uh, and your process um, to the ultimate goal. Also, goal setting really provides directed attention, which is essential in any goal for both athletic and non-athletic populations. You know, because a lot of people find themselves with big dreams and aspirations, but they don't have any direction. You know, they find themselves in limbo. They find themselves wondering, asking them a lot of questions. You know, Where do I get started? You know, that's usually the, the biggest question I've found in my practice so far since uh, since undergraduate is that you know people the hardest part is really it's really getting started it's really getting past that initial inertia and developing the momentum uh, to get going um, I always relate it to kind of you know when you see someone who's if you ever seen someone who had a car broke down and they can't push it a little you know it's really difficult at first you know but once they get it moving you know um, the momentum develops and things aren't as bad so once we've directed um, uh, our attention on a specific goal, then we can use mobilizing effort as an ally. You know, we can really then embrace the idea of being an arrow uh, headed towards its target because we have direction, we have concentration, and we have our goals written down, organized um, in a uh, organized fashion so um, we can um, have the highest uh, probability of accomplishing those goals. The most common types of goals seen in athletics are outcome goals, which are based on competition or the athletic event. The outcome goals are how well you perform in competition or whether or not you win or lose. In outcome goals, you are comparing yourself and your abilities to others. The example I used was winning a championship. In performance goals, you know, unlike outcome goals, uh, they do not involve um, comparison of yourself with others. It's more about using uh, your goals to achieve your personal best, such as catching every pass in a football game or making every free throw in a basketball game. In process goals, you see, these are the day-to-day -day goals and how you are going to work to achieve your uh, main goal or outcome. And these type of goals serve to really narrow, narrow your focus and allow you to take the smaller steps in assisting in the accomplishment of um, your ultimate goal. And we see here when you look at these type of goals, it's the process goals that enable the performance goals and ultimately the outcome goals to uh, to be met. You know, so the, um, the, the take home message here is to really reiterate the importance of um, preparation um, in terms of our goal setting um, because our outcome goal you know is really only going to be as good as the process and the extent of energy and preparation we invest in the process some additional types of goals are long-term versus short-term goals um, the positive versus negative goal setting, uh, mutual goal setting, and team versus individual goals. You know, both long and short term goals provide uh, direction, but short term goals appear to have the greatest motivational effects. Short term goals are more readily attainable and serve as stepping stones to the more distant long term goals. Uh, in regards to the positive versus negative goal setting, you know, a positive goals direct what to do rather than what not to do, and negative goals direct our attention to the errors we wish to avoid or eliminate. The mutual go goal setting refers to um, you know the the type of goals that are established between both player and coach, and when those goals are on the same page, it provides for optimal uh, motivation and enhancement. Of, uh, of purpose and reasoning um, behind those goals. Um, in regards to the team versus individual goals, you know, the team goals appear to uh, have the greatest importance for team sports, of course, but the reality is, is that most team goals can be broken down into individual roles and responsibilities. Each player has to achieve these individual roles and responsibilities for the team to function effectively. Team goals can be further broken down into three primary components. 
They are the planning phase, which consists of the needs assessment that's performed by the coach that he does for his team as a whole and also for each individual relative to the areas of um, needed improvement. Um, and, you know, after every competition, you know, it's very important for a coach and player uh, and team to get together and to discuss, um, you know, the strengths and the weaknesses um, of their performance regardless of the outcome. Example of this would be a guy like Nick Saban who we've seen regardless win or lose you know he still gets on his players and critiques them even when they win he still you know has you know the expression sometimes of someone who may have lost because he's a perfectionist um, you know he, he really he really um, strives to be perfect in the process and I think that's a really good example of someone who is a great team leader and you know after those performances you know we we see we go into the second component which is the meeting phase and this is the the part of um, team goals in which it's really important to reflect and discuss um, performance to assess um, the strengths and weaknesses of a player and the team and to see how that aligns with the team and individual goals of, of the season. Um, coaches should start to instruct athletes on what we call the SMART principle, which we will discuss a little bit later in the presentation. Um, and that's also a, an important part of the meeting phase as well. And the last part is called the evaluation phase. This, this phase of goal setting uh, should take place at the end of the competitive season um, and also throughout uh, this season. And, and goals set by the team and by individuals should be monitored regularly um, this will allow for an ongoing critiquing process so that we can fix hiccups as we progress throughout the season in hopes of achieving our outcome goals the example I used for team versus individual goals was a football team uh, the team goal for the football team is to win the game Whereas the individual goals, in order to make that ultimate goal happen, would be for everyone to make their blocks, to do their assignments, to wrap up when tackling, to catch the ball, to play lights out football, uh, and when you unite, when you unite all of those performance um, and process goals, um, that's when you're able to obtain the actual outcome goal, which in this case is to win the football game. Some common goal setting problems uh, that we encounter are athletes complaining of, uh, you know, they consider it a little too boring. And the best defense uh, against this kind of problem is to really emphasize um, just how effective goal setting is. Perhaps use a few examples Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Greg Maddox, any of some of the greatest sports um, players in the history of, of their sports. Um, all of these individuals excelled in goal setting and you can demonstrate to your athlete how in which they did it and how to apply similar principles to help them achieve their goals too so another common problem that we see is they you know they might try to argue that it, it takes too much time and you know goal setting does take time at least in the beginning but it's an extremely um, wise investment to make up front and it pays off big time in the end because you're organized, you have direction, you have persistence, and you're driven once you can see your goals in an organized fashion and execute them with action, mobilizing effort as we stated earlier. Another common goal is uh, poorly written goal statements. You know, you don't want to write very vague statements. You know, just, you don't want to write outcome uh, type of goals. You really want to critique the process. You want to focus on the process uh, goals. You want to focus on the performance goals, the kind of goals that you are dependent upon yourself because you have to be able to provide your best effort before you can help contribute to the team's best effort. And that's very important to underscore when working with athletes before they get too far ahead of themselves. And it also prevents excess weight and pressure um, that they might place on themselves um, also. And lastly, a failure to monitor um, performance progress 
Again, we mentioned earlier in the beginning of the presentation how critical it is uh, for athletes to have quantifiable feedback. Um, this really does help tremendously in terms of motivation for an athlete, um, the purpose behind their goal, and helping them stay on route to getting to their target. Um, so this is another thing that we really should underscore and help athletes understand the importance of in terms of achieving their goals. Some important questions to consider when assisting an athlete in developing an optimal goal setting uh, route for themselves are questions such as, uh, you know, is this a goal you really want to achieve? Why do you want to achieve it? What's your reasoning behind it? I think that's very, very important because that will determine the extent of motivation and drive they have behind the effort they place and invest in that goal. And is this a goal for you, for an individual, or for a team? or someone else. Is the goal too challenging or is the goal too simple? Also, is the goal realistic? Now, I will say on a side note, it's very important to be cautious of this question because being realistic is the most commonly traveled path to mediocrity. I guarantee all of the greatest athletes in the world, you know, believed in what others thought was unrealistic. So it really depends. Um, this is a very individualistic question on the caliber of athlete that you're working with and the extent of belief, effort, energy, and faith they have in what they're doing. An acronym commonly used to assist uh, athletes and uh, coaches in uh, developing sound goal setting ideals is called SMART. Um, the S stands for specific goals. For instance, um, rather than say just to run faster, maybe finish a 10K less than 45 minutes is a little bit more specific and offers better feedback. M, measurable goals. You know, this is used to quantify those goals to, you know, um, put how much you're going to train, how many days of the week, the kind of times that you're expecting to run uh, those distances in. A is for action-oriented goals, and these should apply actions that you need to take. Um, and the R is for realistic goals. You know, you want to make sure your goals are difficult, but they're reachable. And for T, um, timely. You know, create goals that you can reach in a reasonable amount of time. Don't do things that would take several years to do. You want to focus on what you can accomplish in the season at hand. Some tips regarding uh, setting goals are that uh, you know goals should always be realistic uh, yet challenging goals. Um, they should always have clearly identified time constraints. Again, we don't want to be setting goals that we can't uh, achieve within uh, the confines of what we are trying to do. Um, and we also want to make sure that we write down our goals, we stay accountable, and that we stay organized, and we monitor them regularly so we continue to critique and evaluate them as we go through the process very very important. Uh, it's also important to use the combination of the process performance and outcomes that we discussed. Using short-term over the long-term goals is the optimal uh, approach in goal setting. Um, being very specific, setting practice as well as uh, competition goals is optimal as well. Making sure that all goals are internalized by the athlete is very important too. We want our athletes to feel ownership um, for their goals um, because that helps with uh, intrinsic motivation. And we also want to consider personality difference when, when goal setting because everybody is their own individual and we can't lose sight of that. And lastly, we should make sure that our goals are moderately difficult so we challenge ourselves to be better. When I was an intern at um, Virginia Tech, the head football coach, Frank Beamer, always told the players, we all make decisions, but in the end, our decisions ultimately make us. And I think there's a common thread here between uh, what he said, and those that um, achieve their their big goals because they really focus on the little things and allow the big things to take care of themselves through optimal decision making and goal setting combined. Lastly, I want to share an acronym by um, 
one of my biggest mentors, uh, Dr. Ben Carson. He's the director of pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins Hospital, and he always uh, he always said, "Think big." And uh, what it stands for is is T is for talent. And talent, um, I think here is you know a reminder that we should be focusing. Uh, with athletes on and remind them of, of all that they do have and not worry about what they don't have and that's how we really gain progress honesty you know they'll live a less stressful life if they're honest insight you know learn from other people's triumphs and mistakes to better their own uh, lives and uh, probability of achieving their goals and dreams um, being nice they'll have less enemies less stress using knowledge you know we talked about being smart when goal setting that applies here um, books you know, there is so much knowledge out there between the covers of all the books um, that are available at the fingertips of athletes. And I think by them seeking out those resources could be an additional um, tool they could put in their toolbox to help advance themselves in their goals. Also, uh, in-depth learning that ties in with the books and God. Never get too big for him. Thank you so much for watching my presentation. I hope you found it of value. Uh, I really enjoyed um, being able to discuss goal setting with you guys and the principles behind it and why uh, it's so vital in our profession in helping athletes. Um, here are some suggested reading um, that I have found in my own experience to be extremely helpful um, with both my personal life and goals and in addition to applying uh, a lot of these lessons with athletes that I've worked in with in the past. They are um, Mind Gym and Athlete's Guide to Inner Excellence. Uh, the book Run by Dean Karnazes. He's the ultra marathon man who's ran around the world more than seven times. And uh, Think Big by Dr. Ben Carson who has a tremendous story if you haven't already heard about it. So thank you guys once again for watching and I hope you have a great week.